Our final topic tonight, Israeli retailers worried and angry as international sporting goods behemoth Nike surprising them with a sudden massive shift in policy. In line with plans to adapt to the global marketplace, Nike is explaining that the continuation of the business relationship between Israeli sellers and Nike corporate no longer matches the company's policies and goals. Here with the details, head of the Technological Marketing Department at Sapir College, Assistant Professor Vili Abraham. Billy, it's great to have you back. Now, where did this come from? How, and how will it affect, more importantly, Israel's economy overall? Well, uh, back in 2017, uh, Nike has decided to adopt a strategy called direct to consumer. Um, and it wants to do it for two reasons. First of all, it wants to provide a premium experience to consumers and it wants to be controlled over that, to have control over that experience. And the other reason is because it wants to have control over prices. Um, or more correctly, pricing. If you have different prices for the same shoe or, or same brand in different places, this might cause confusion among consumers and eventually might even impact uh, the brand image. So I guess this is something that it wants to do. And by the way, if you look at uh, the stock price of Nike ever since 2017, even a little bit before that, uh, the stock price has almost tripled. Um, and so has its uh, market valuation, which has increased significantly. Today, it's, it's a $30 billion company. All right. Now, you mentioned, you mentioned uh, that Nike wants to ideally control its pricing. But this will un won't this undoubtedly lead to a gross inflation of the price on Nike products in Israel? And if the move is truly global, it may lead to a rise in costs to all consumers, no? Well, not necessarily. If it wants to control the pricing, it might set a a particular price for different uh, shoe, shoe models. Mm. Um, that's one thing. Regarding its effect on Israel, I don't think it will have a major effect, although the small retailers will not be able to sell Nike products, but they can sell uh, other brands, uh, not Adidas, which also is following suit, but there are other brands and other market segments that they can target. I think that it's, it's, it's always a good idea not to put all your eggs in one basket. What, what about Nike's yeah, bottom line in Israel? Will, will, will consumers well, maybe stop be... buying Nike? Well, it depends how you look at it. If you look at millennials, uh, and in general, uh, it has a 62% share of the market. It has a lot of loyal consumers. And I think if you increase the price by 10 or 20%, it may not deter them, although it depend, depends on price sensitivity. But I think the people who buy Nike in Israel are the people who are from you know the middle class and, and higher upper middle class. They, they can afford Nike because... It's, it's more expensive than it is in Israel. So I don't think it will have a big uh, effect on its bottom line because the demand will be increased among the larger retailers, which will be selling Nike in Israel. So it means that there just will be a, a shift in demand from the smaller retailers to the more larger, bigger retailers. All right, and my final question that I know you mentioned that this was a plan that was put forward already in 2017 and Nike already similarly cut its ties to Amazon in 2019. Uh, but there are critics who claim that perhaps Nike is jumping on this BDS bandwagon. Do you think that there's any truth to that claim? And, and if there is, do you think Nike will ever come out and say it? No, they'll never say it. Uh, because if you if we, remember, we spoke about Ben and & Jerry, and they have suffered uh, the dire consequences of its move. The investment uh, moves on the side of many uh, uh, states in the United States. Uh, I, look, you know, Nike is a public company, and all it wants to do is increase its profits. The higher its profits, the greater value a brand has, and it brings profits to investors. And I think it's strictly a um, business move. Um, today, With because of coronavirus, a lot of people moved online. They buy online, and they want to be in control. They want to sell directly to consumers, because if you don't have any intermediaries, it means that there's nobody take, to take a bite, or, uh, a bite out of your profits, and you make more money. And I think it's just strictly a move to increase its profits. All right, Billy Abraham, thank you so much. It's a pleasure.